if has anyone got any fantastic wins that they want to share with us, big or small? That'd be great. Anyone? Okay, well, I put up on the um, it's Maria here. I put up on the Property Sisters first that after two years of uh, planning, we finally got the um, Can You See Police Station through. But what was really funny was um, because it had been in the, the paper the day before, we thought that, um, well, we were so busy. And this is actually a really important thing is that you've got to have a big pipeline because if you have just one thing, then you worry about it. And our architect phoned us to see if we joined the virtual meeting. And uh, he was quite surprised that Gordon and I hadn't. And it was just as well because um, there were 45 pe people watching it and participating. And they were strenuously objecting to it. Um, and I think that because we weren't on it, I mean, I would have just kind of exploded and reacted to them. But uh, what happened was that the planning committee uh, took up our position uh, because they were going to defer it, which was just a complete shock. So um, because we were busy doing um, everything else, uh, it passed in absentia. And if we had been there, you know, putting our laser focus on it, I think it might not have been. So we're absolutely um, delighted that uh, it's eight uh, serviced accommodation and it's, um, it's a 1970s uh, concrete building. And because all of us property sisters look at branding our properties, you know, I've got one, Slateford House 1770. I've got the beautiful church in Portobello. And I've got the merchants, which was the Charles McKinley um, wine merchant's office in Leith. And then this 1970s uh, police station. I thought, what can you see? And then uh, my daughter sent me this quote um, from Robert Louis Stevenson. And he wrote Treasure Island. And, uh, you know, huge. And he came to King UC to write. And in one of his... Um, letters to his friends he said please all come to can you see and i thought wow that is just perfect branding for us so perhaps the the biggest win of the week was finding robert louis stevenson so thank you and i'll uh, look forward to hearing everyone else's wins anyone else want to jump in claire you must have a i win. know there's lots and lots of wins on that oh yeah Carry on. I'm just, I'm just, a, just to do a very, very quick one, just in relation to um, Carolina's course, her um, website and um, creating more impact online course. I've, um, as a result of doing that uh, course, even though I'm on a different platform, I've actually revamped my whole website and it's now more streamlined against my two target audiences. So um, that was my big win. This I did some last Sunday and uh, this week, and I'm feeling um, a lot better now that I don't uh, hide under the parapet when I give someone the URL for my website. So uh, you thank your... you, Carolina, and um, everyone else on that. Can you put your URL in the Zoom chat so that we can have a look at it? Can what you put your yeah. URL in the chat? Right. Amazing. Well done, Louise. Who else, guys? Um, I'm going to win this week. Actually, it's quite a big one for us because it's been seven months in the making. So I've been um, watching this house nine doors down from our original HMO for about seven months now. Um, and it finally came on the market last week, um, last Friday. We put an offer in on Monday and uh, offer was accepted Wednesday. So finally got that one through and... Um, Finance application went in yesterday. Search just got paid for yesterday. Getting the ball rolling and really want to make this happen and get this across the line in the next three months because I've got an Article 4 deadline really ramping up. So um, trying to get in before then. So fingers crossed this all goes through as expected. And, yeah, big win for us this week, I think. Thanks. Well done. Amazing news. Can we share the last win? Is that okay? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> on, yeah, we've got um, 
we've got a HMO going through in Birmingham and Article 4 is coming up um, early June. So we've been kind of going back and forth with planning a lot on um, yeah getting it approved and we've managed to come to an agreement. So we're waiting on, yeah, Tuesday. it was kind of Tuesday will be the final thing, but we're kind of 99% sure that it's going to be accepted. Yes. It's a big win. Yeah, it's good. Fantastic <laughs> news, guys. Who else? Come on, there is so many wins, I'm sure. I've got a win. <laughs> good morning, everyone. Um, so we listed um, a property that we refurbished during lockdown entirely. Uh, we listed it on open rent yesterday, and um, within 48 hours, we'd had four offers over the rent that I was asking for. I was asking for 10% more than the maximum rent in my area, and I got offered 10% on top of what I was asking for. It was incredible. So I have a tenant moving in on Friday. Well done. We should have a thing, guys, for property sister, the silent club. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's how it looks when we're all on mute. Uh, cool, amazing. More guys, honestly. I'm Who else? Who's going to have our last win of the week? Come on. Okay, I've got a couple of wins. Um, one is that I've been going back and forth with Trafford Council trying to get um, a permitted development app signed off. Um, they originally said that because I couldn't do the noise assessment until it was because it, it isn't business as usual because all the commercial places and all the roads are quite quiet. So they kind of said you need to just revoke your application and wait until it's business as usual but obviously that could have been like in another three or four months so I just went back and forth for ages with them but then I eventually got that signed off by them and I had a bit of a debate over the cycle parking but then they finally agreed to it so that's coming through next week which is great and um, I got another investor on board who reached out to me uh, on Instagram so yeah good week. Very good. <laughs> And um, we're going to jump on the presentation right now, guys. But um, if you remember any win, and I'm sure you will, because it's always like takes a couple of minutes until you go, oh, I should have mentioned that. And then we will come back to it afterwards as well, because we want to always finish on a high. Uh, and I'm sure there is plenty of other people who will come up with something by that time. Cool. Very good. So uh, let me move on to what I want to discuss today. And um, it's a presentation that I do quite a bit. Um, and uh, maybe I'll minimize this so that all of you can see. And it describes what we do in uh, my practice at MSHIC, how we um, help developers market their uh, projects for sales. Uh, but I think everything that I've learned um, through this journey, you know, I started doing my own projects, um, and even did a crowdfunding project <clears throat> as a developer because I thought being developer is um, so glamorous um, and it's actually very, very, very hard work. Um, so I'm doing a very, very, very right, hard work on the, in just a part of it right now when we help um, create this uh, beautiful homes and also wrap it around uh, the strategy for sales. Um, and if you watch the video from Property Sisters, um, if you aren't subscribed to the channel, subscribe because there is a video of me talking how I fell into this, into doing this. Um, you know, the, the company, Ademshik was initially a development company. Um, then we did um, um, a couple of projects. Uh, and in the end, I decided that I love the most this part. And that I really would um, prefer to do just that, to create these amazing identities for homes. Um, I'm just going to check because I see that there is some chat coming up. Um, uh, Ruth, can you hear me okay? Yes, I can hear you. Oh, yeah. Yes, you're really good, yeah. really oh, good, yeah. yeah. Fabulous, very good. Uh, so I'll ignore the chat until the end then. Um, so, yeah, so um, uh, I really believe, uh, I kind of call it instant gratification right now, because when you're a developer, when you have projects, it takes such a long time. You know, you're going to start doing this bit that I enjoy the most in like months, whatever, until you, uh, and, but you have to go through all the purchase, the solicitors, you know, you have to go through dealing with contractors finding the team, all of the like, you know, investors, all of the bits that are 
probably a bit less enjoyable. And I just go for instant gratification of creating these beautiful homes. Um, so what we what we kind of the whole process um, where we get involved is very often we start working with developer. Actually, probably initially they come to us at the very end when it's like the the flats are on the market and they haven't sold very well and they they go oh we really need a show home someone told us we need a show home so we so we go go in and we're like yeah we can create a show home but really we should have had this discussion two years ago um, because um, often when the show home happens um, the specification is not as it should. The layout of the house is not as it should be. Uh, you know, you should really be starting the discussion on the day you you are uh, you are purchasing, or even earlier uh, as you are purchasing, because um, you know, like the guys that do HMOs will know this, because that's like the first thing they do. They make make tweaks to the layouts, how it's going to work for uh, for the for the user. It's very important for you that 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 layout works because um, you will own this asset. You will have to manage it, etc. But interestingly, many developers, especially in their first couple of projects, uh, they take this planning that they get for granted. Uh, and they're like, we got planning. We're just going to, they're so excited. And I understand it. They just, they just go and deliver, deliver, deliver. Um, and what they what they might find is that someone got the planning because he was the planning consultant and that was the easiest route to get the planning. Um, but they could have done something completely different with that, uh, with that space. Um, and we come in and we go like, why is there a bedroom on the on the side of the uh, of the street? Or this is your sunny side. This is how you should uh, change the sizes of bedrooms versus sizes of living rooms. Why is there like a corridor for ten meters that takes up all of the space where this could be uh, put into the bedroom? Uh, and often we will be we will we will we always redesign every single development. Uh, and the projects we work on are like nine units until 25. Um, and that's the first thing we do. So if you take one thing from this, it's definitely that the layouts are like most important thing. And it doesn't matter if you if you are an HMO uh, developer, then I'm sure you're already doing it because that's like super important there, even more probably than in sales. Um, but uh, because in sales, people will only realize it's bad once they buy it <laughs> or very often will find all of those um, things that they don't like when they buy it. Or why is the socket here or why, why is uh, the TV here, etc. And we try to think about all those things. And then in the development period, we create an identity and uh, for the interior design, something that's completely different from anyone else, so that people go in there and they go, wow, you know, like, I must have one of them, and there is just nine of them, or there's just 15 of them. Um, so that, that's what we're going for. Um, and Maria actually touched upon this branding identity thing again already. So, so every building needs to have some sort of interest around it. Uh, and if it already has some historical interest or it's in, a, in an amazing place, we're just going to borrow that identity and enhance it uh, and just make it this super unique experience for, for people to, so that they must live in that place. Uh, and the show home is the last thing I'll discuss. I'll show you some examples um, of that and what we do over there. But that's kind of, this is the tool for people who forgot to do all the previous things. Uh, and when we sell our offer, we sell all three of them together. Um, but uh, if we do a very good job, the whole idea is if we do a very good job on the, on the be beginner bit and we launch the scheme, let's say six between six and three months uh, before practical completion uh, we might even not launch it for a long time but we already have a website and we gather leads so that it's ready for like uh, a launch uh, then we don't need to put a show home together because you really want to get reservations for everything before you um, before you finish um, building and that might be the same, really. This could be a method for HMOs as well. And I'll show you one tool that I think would work very well on a buy to let, on a small project, on an HMO. It works well every single time for us. 
So this is just uh, just all of the pro projects products that we do um, to make this process work. Um, and I explained a little bit more on my talk in February about kind of the idea of launching a new product and it's constantly evolves. This constantly evolves. So whoever is building a business, don't worry about not having your product just right because we started with home styling and now we have all of these different things that we do. Some of our clients and I'm very proud because of this group because um, they will typically have two, three, five, uh, up to 11 projects with us until now. So it's all about that the strategy is to keep your current clients happy and just have a small group of people who really love working with us. Um, and even some very large customers like uh, Great Portland Estates and we worked um, on three projects for them already, which is really amazing. Um, I think someone mentioned that on a, uh, yeah, Helen mentioned this last week on her um, property sister stock that uh, in banking it's called the low hanging fruit. Uh, and uh, and that's kind of what I what I also believe in. You know, keep your existing customers happy so that they come back and they, you grow the business together. Um, so on the unlocking uh, potential, uh, there is the first question that we always ask our client. Um, or well, uh, let's let's just give you a high level of what we're going to be discussing. So we're going to be discussing the floor plan review, which I touched upon already. Um, marketing and CGI's and the whole marketing package, um, uh, the concept and specification, then the technical details, and at the at the end show home. So you could like position these these five different bits, and and it's easier for me to break them up and discuss them. Um, so why you should care, and um, here are some of, our, this is of one of our very early uh, projects, I think I just left, or maybe haven't even left banking by then, this is a project for Century Spaces um, in Bristol, um, and one of the, we were converting, they were converting the whole flat into seven units, and one of them, they decided that they're going to do this attic unit. Uh, and the developer over here is, you know, is, he's very tall, so he's uh, almost touching the, the ceiling uh, with his head. But um, you you had to have a lot of imagination to come up with how this uh, space could be transformed, especially what I mentioned already, layout optimization, because you had these eaves everywhere. The space where you could like really stand up was the bit in the middle. And like the whole building um, was a conversion, so none none of the flats were like ideal for for sales. None, none of them; they, they were quite quirky, I must admit. Uh, and that was a project in two thousand eighteen um, in Bristol. Uh, but but we worked on this to to create this really dream apartment. It was in the end a dream apartment for a woman uh, because <laughs> you. All of the toilets were like hidden. Oh, that's that's actually the the bathroom from that apartment, uh, but the toilets were like hidden in a corners, uh, and you couldn't actually stand up in front of them. So we decided the ideal purchaser is a woman, um, and it had a big walk-in wardrobe. It was really beautiful, bright um, um, apartment where we also put put these fake beams in, as you see over here on the on the screen. Uh, which was really funny because it felt like some sort of cottage apartment. It really felt amazing. Um, but it's just, uh, I, I think also one thing that I want to point out here is uh, my philosophy is um, for creating really bright and colorful spaces. Um, and I see a lot on Instagram at the moment where um, they are painted dark paint. They are really quirky and very interesting, but they're quite dark. Uh, and I personally, I can't um, subscribe to that because um, I feel really um, down in a dark space. Um, so everything that we do is going to be colorful and it's going to stand out with colors and pictures. Um, and one of the huge takeaways from this, really, guys, is that you should always be taking professional pictures of your interiors. Um, uh, if you are renting, you know, it's a it's a... You spend about 200 pounds or whatever for a photographer and he will come and take these pictures of a st stage property that you just reuse on every single next uh, time you have to rent it. 
it's like that's the best investment you could have. Uh, so always bring in photo uh, professional to take these pictures. They will look bright. They will look really nice uh, and sunny. And you will stand out immediately uh, from your competition. So that's uh, this, this other uh, picture that I had. And if you think of that, this used to be this attic. Oh, sorry. This used to be this attic that you would never imagine that something like that can be transformed into this, such amazing apartment. Um, and then we had an apartment, and this, so this flat sold within one week in August. It was like, uh, it was taken from the market immediately, which was very surprising for us, but we, were, we loved it. Uh, and the flat that I'm showing you right now was on the ground floor. And the interesting part about it was that it had a very weird um, layout. So when you see here on the right side, you would come through. Um, and straight into the this table and then that that door that you see in the back led you to a small uh, bedroom but you, we couldn't actually fit the bed there so it had to be a studio then you went to the toilet and on this side you came to the living room you had to walk through the living room to get to your toilet through the toilet to the to the bedroom like the layout was all wrong all wrong um, but we, um, the, the penthouse sold, sold in one week, but this flat got 33 viewings and sold for 20% over asking price, which was 46 grand extra for the developer. We were just looking at this unfolding. This was one of our first projects and we could not believe it was like the bidding war. It was August as well, um, uh, you know, 2018. So I think this was like uh, post Brexit or whatever. I don't, I don't remember the date, but um, uh, it was really, really interesting because we tested a bunch of, we tested three show homes in this development actually. And the first one that we did before the penthouse and this ground floor flat was kind of grayish. It was very like more Chelsea, you know, you, you, gray was so big uh, than two, two years ago. Uh, and it didn't get that much, like it didn't get that, then that many viewings, not that many people came through. And we were like, okay, so there is something that these flats have that the others don't. And that, that thing was that we put so much more color into these spaces. Um, they, were, they were really like uh, the picture that I showed you a minute ago, um, so colorful, ye yellow especially. And I found that yellow is the best color. Um, so we've had yellow in a lot of, in, in the bedrooms, we had yellow on the cushions. And that's like, that. those strong colors um, are really like pulling people to look through the ad and, um, and find out more about your place. So that's a huge tip for everyone. Um, one thing that we do is what you will always find in our projects is that everything else is very neutral. So it's always like white walls or that off gray walls, very scanty floors, very bright. Um, and um, yeah, I would, but, I, but, but the furniture uh, and the finishes, they speak to the buyer and they kind of make this flat very vibrant and happy, I guess. I'm always up for happy interiors. Um, so another interesting project um, that uh, just shows the value of interiors um, is this one. It's a, um, a hotel in Epsom, um, which the developer is converting and also adding some extra, uh, extra spaces there. Um, and um, we, there is 21 flats there. Uh, it's ongoing. The show home launched just before coronavirus started. So like the last weekend before the lockdown. Um, and we've done a lot of, um, you know, floor plan optimization, playing with the interiors because it's very hard um, to uh, to to look at the old, an old building and how you can add value and also some some stuff we couldn't touch. Um, uh, some, you know, we had to leave historical features and it was quite tough. And we created the branding for it um, to be this like cute. Um, um, uh, at a rural against retreat uh, and those are just ideas before we actually uh, finish the branding uh, so the final one looked a little bit different but this this branding you know we've wrapped around uh, the hoarding we've wrapped around the whole building which is probably about 30 meters if not more maybe 50 meters of hoarding uh, which has our cgis on it it has the details of the website uh, contact details for the estate agent 
uh, and um, I w- I could never believe um, you know we've do- we've done hoardings before but they were quite smaller and they've had amazing um, uh, uh, amazing amazing uh, results but this one is our best one because even though this is a rural 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 road sorry um, almost no one like drives there. But there is a lot of people, even during the lockdown, walking there to get to um, to the park uh, uh, and just doing walks. And it, it, the inquiries are coming all the time. Um, and the, when you do this sort of hoarding that is very visual and very, uh, you know, interesting, um, what we also do is we create a page for it so that we... Um, we can capture interest from people. So this uh, website, uh, the chalk line, um, uh, links to a site uh, that we developed and all of the inquiries go to estate agents, but we can monitor, you know, like we get the data on when um, the data is owned by the developer, which is also uh, good because often you change estate agents. Um, but um, the inquiries go direct to the estate agent. Uh, he deals with that, but we get very interesting feedback. And that's how I know kind of that even during lockdown, people are still looking for homes because we now have this with maybe 15, 20 projects. So we can see, um, you know, what sort of, what are the best um best sellers and kind of where where it really works um and and i think that sort of thing you know doing this sort of small wrap around um hoarding around an hmo or just like a gate or some sort of banner banner up front that links to a site and i've you know, I've, I've done a course on site, so you can do it even yourself if you want to. I, I find that a huge, a huge selling point uh, to the point where we've had a couple of we have projects where there is just the gate like you have here. Literally, it's a gate that leads you in between buildings. And we had flats sold from that hoarding and people contacted uh, the developer through it. They contacted the state agent. In one case, a state agent said that those flats are not ready, so they should wait. He didn't take the details. So they went to the logo of the developer. They, they uh, emailed through the site and, um, and, yeah, and, the, and he sold them a flat. Um, but so, so that's like a huge takeaway for whoever is doing a project. You know, always have really luxurious um, CGIs on it because I think that just like with the pictures on the on your on your um, Zupla or whatever, when you take professional pictures and you have those colors that stand out, the the um, the beautiful interiors that stand out, it's it's the same everywhere on the website on the hoarding. You really need to have this visual picture that brings people to apply and to leave their details. Um, so this is a few CGI's from that project that we uh, the project that we actually had on our hoarding. Uh, and then this is the finished product, a show home that launched just before um, the just before uh, coronavirus. Uh, and interest, we, so we did all of the interiors for it, show home and the whole marketing package. So the whole lot that I described uh, to you. Um, and we're just starting a third project for this developer because obviously they saw that it works. Um, and the interesting thing that all is also because we specify all the properties we find uh, like savings in the process. Uh, so in this case, we, uh, you know, one of the offers is specifying everything. And in this case, we sell, we saved 80,000 pounds on kitchens alone, just through comparing different quotes, bringing our suppliers, kitchens and bathrooms we have amazing suppliers for. Uh, and, um, you know, if you if you just go with, um, with what contractor is suggesting, you might miss out there. Um, but also another thing on this project is that we've actually had on the day we launched um, before um, coronavirus lockdown, we actually had eight reserva- nine reservations on that day out of 21 properties. So um, we were just so happy and people were, you know, the product is so different because it's this historical building. It's been there forever. It's in this beautiful location and the interiors are like really, um, uh, you know, they match they match the product, what you would expect from, uh, from a building like this. So, yeah, we couldn't be more happy. 
Um, and one more project that I want to discuss with you just to give get your uh, creative juices flowing, I guess. Um, it's um, it's Broad, uh, Brompton Gardens, uh, which is yet again uh, slightly different. Um, uh, you know, the last um, day we launched it, I think, um, end of last year or something like that. Um, and they sold within uh, less than three months. Those are really beautiful houses, four houses only, uh, in Woking, in West End Woking. And um, they are um, really nice inside. Uh, the developer really, the, those are our CGIs. We're going there on Wednesday to film, uh, actually all of the interiors. Uh, the developer is, um, uh, is really happy with how they turn out. Um, and and yeah, the, the beauty of this is what once again this is a development company that has been going for uh, twenty years or so, um, uh, Fleet Homes, and they've never used this model that uh, that we are um, kind of uh, that we are promoting. So typically they would get to the end, uh, put a show home in, uh, and then sell it. But what we say is create this really stunning marketing, um, this really stunning CGI's. Have it all ready for the estate agent. You know, uh, do work. Uh, let them work on it while you are going to uh, practical completion. Uh, and once you know practical completion happen, you're already so deep uh, in your legal process. You just need a couple more weeks uh, for the buyers to sign it off and to proceed with purchase. Um, and this is the they've done it the first time, uh, and they sold all the houses um, within a couple of months, way before practical completion. So those are some of our CGIs for the project. They were on Zoopla, they were on Rightmove, um, and they were um, they they haven't actually done a website and the hoarding because there wasn't any space for it. But we're going to do this on the next project um, because yeah, even a small one I think uh, is an immediate winner. So yeah, for the first time, reserve uh, all homes reserved before practical completion. They cost uh, between nine hundred thousand and one point three million. So they are not small projects. The, it's not five hundred k um, um, per, uh, per apartment. Um, but uh, yeah, they, they are really stunning. I cannot wait to see them when they're finished. The, and these are some of the pictures I saw on Instagram, which just made me like, ah, oh, I need to go and see it. Uh, that's why we're going on Wednesday to check it out. Yeah. So I do hope that I have your attention right now. Uh, and I'm just going to give you a few more tips on what you could do um, to utilize this process we developed in your projects. Um, so we're going to look at these four different buckets. Um, so when you, first of all, before you start we always think about who is going to be the buyer and really that's like the first question we ask um, because it's going to be different if you're doing a downsizer's property you know you need a lift for example um, I very often have clients who go like who is this building for it's for downsizers okay like but it's five floors and there is no lift uh, and they're like oh, okay so, so you might have a, 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 a different opinion about who your client is but it's very important that you start with that and the design for them um, and kind of almost narrow your niche because they will want each of these guys, you know, the young couple, um, single, downsizers, etc. They will want different things. So you should cater from the interiors and your branding for what they need. Um, so an example of where, so starting from the first point on layouts, um, you know, always start with layouts. How do they look like? How you can make them better? Um, this is a development in, from Broadwin Homes in um, in Acton, um, where we came in uh, quite early, uh, and this is how the layouts looked for this uh, for this unit. And I could not believe it. Um, you had to come in, and then you had like, for example, this kitchen in the middle, which is like enclosed on the left side, doesn't have any light. It's like a box inside a room, but you have to walk through your living room to get to your toilet. All the rooms are like very strange sizes. And then the end suite is kind of stealing some space from the building and from the flat next door. I don't understand the corridor inside this other flat that leads you to the 
ba bathroom and bedroom. It was all very confused and that's probably the least confused uh, floor of it. Um, so we came in and we started looking at how you can make these apartments like really straight and logical. Um, so uh, typically on all other floors, we had to move the lift a little bit so that um, it aligns with the structural core of the building. Um, but um, also on all other floors, this is just one floor that didn't have this core running through the whole property. But we made it run through the whole property, which is a cheaper building method. Um, and um, and without having to do the zigzagging of of core, uh, and also these flats are more more logical. You have a kitchen integrated in your living room. Um, you have you know square bedrooms. Um, it, it's all worked so much better that way. Uh, and then the developer um, believes that we've added 150k of value on that development just through changing the layouts. Um, so, which is also something I always repeat to people uh, because they they see the cost, but they don't see the money that you're uh, winning on design. Um, so, on layouts, my takeaways is always think about storage because that's a big thing that people come um, to look at uh, when they when they are viewing. The size of corridors, I don't know why, but many architects will design those really huge corridors through property. And then that means that the bedrooms are smaller or the, um, you know, the, or your living spaces are smaller. I don't understand it. I always try to minimize it. Um, and ideally I wouldn't have any, but um, that's not always an option for um, fire safety. Natural light is really big for me. So I always go, where is the south facing side? I need to have like my best interiors there, not bedrooms, but, you know, like have, have your living rooms to the south facing side, how people will interact with the space, how the light goes through it. Um, and then, yeah, open floor plan. I think that's uh, almost a must recently. Um, everybody wants it, um, and and we try to wor work the building to have some open plant spaces. So for my second project, we're going to look at another of actually Broadwing Homes projects in, um, uh, in Peterborough. Um, and that uh, we will discuss here uh, marketing strategy. Um, so how do you sell the dream in advance? Um, so this is one of our CGIs for, for the project uh, of Broadwing Homes. I think we, oh yeah, have some other examples here. Uh, a five unit project in uh, Whetstone where we developed all of the interiors. We developed the full branding and actually just, it's quite interesting for everyone who's listening because this is a developer that uh, has a large HMO portfolio. But this was his first. Um, um, this was his first build, uh, new build. Um, so he purchased this site, which is really amazing. It's on the main road in Whetstone. Next to it is Waitrose. I, I think you can see the sign over here, um, and it has five really nice apartments, um, and then uh, also a commercial unit. And interestingly, um, with the uh, with the estate agent. Um, uh, you know, we created like a hype around this project when it launched. So it launched on the day that they demolished the building. Um, so you know, no nowhere near uh, having um, nowhere near having a fi final product. Uh, and we created those really large boards with finishes uh, for the property. You know, all the tiles, like uh, like very nicely outlined meter one meter by one meter huge boards. With all, with all the finishes. And then we printed all the branding. Uh, the hoarding went up with, um, with the details of the project. Mm -hmm. And in two weeks, since I think uh, actually on the launch, they sent, sell, sold one or two of these units. Uh, and in two weeks, they've had three sold. Um, and uh, the larger units, I think, uh, I don't, I haven't ca caught up with them for a while, but, uh, it, but just, it was such a huge success to reserve 60% of the project, you know, in the first two weeks, as, as the developer was starting to dig, you know, there was nothing there. Uh, and, and also it shows that kind of a good product sells itself, good location, beautiful interior, something that people can touch, like the mood boards. 
you, and you don't have to be um, an established developer with 10 million uh, years of experience. You can just create something uh, beautiful on your first project. Um, so just showing you a little bit more on marketing. So that, that I consider, the previous project, I consider really large marketing win. Um, and here also the, there is another um, takeaway for marketing is CGI's. And I always, I love CGI's because they give the user immediately an idea of oh, okay. what they're buying. Um, so for example, on this uh, picture, um, uh, on this project, uh, the top two images are CGI's and the bottom two are, um, are the actual apartment. Um, and I actually bought the, the sofa that's on the top uh, CGI. Uh, I actually bought that for the show home, but it didn't fit through the door. And I was really upset because I wanted them to look identical. But, uh, but yeah, in the end, they didn't. And there's a couple other uh, differences. But um, it shows you that you can actually show uh, what you're going to uh, deliver and then deliver it. And I think it's a great strategy also with investor relations because you know, if you if you start the project, uh, you know, uh, a year earlier, and you say to your investor, "This is how I want it to look like, and this is what I'm uh, I'm gonna achieve," and then you come back a year later and you go like, "This is exactly what I've achieved." It's a story that you can utilize uh, for you know for all of your next projects. And so I always, always um, uh, tell people to do professional looking photorealistic CGI's uh, for their projects uh, because on all platforms, on your personal branding, on your um, business marketing, on the sales of this apartment, you're winning on all platforms. It's not cheap, but it's, it's uh, definitely recommended. Um, so yeah, over here, you know, how you style your CGI's, what you put inside is going to be a beautiful, you know, it's going to make the buyer think, oh, do I want to live there? So, so we typically put furniture that that particular buyer would like to see. So if it's a, you know, whenever uh, a bachelor pad, we will put that sort of furniture, just as if we were furnishing an actual apartment. Um, and then we will make it look like luxury and, you know, and, uh, and really impactful for off-plan sales. And that's just considered marketing cost. If you want to grow your business, you need to spend money on marketing, um, and in uh, and and you just have to, you know, sometimes have a budget that maybe is a marketing budget for that particular development, but it's also a budget for you uh, to, you know, to show off what you're doing. Uh, and so, and often you won't be able to show off what you're doing for a year because the project will be uh, built, and that's the way to do it. Um, the next one is uh, concept and specification and creating something completely different for the buyer. Um, so this is just some of the CGI's of a, on a scheme uh, from Mount Batten Homes where we were testing, you know, how does the big mirror look like? How does the small mirror, what sort of tiles we would like and proposing uh, those to the developer. Um, and this is all about creating something that no one else has. Um, but the trick in what we do is that it still needs to be fairly, you know, it has to be unique, but it needs to be still to everyone's taste. Um, so um, it's it's like a balancing act of coming up with something that you know, every client, will, the, the, the people would walk in and go, yeah, I might live here, uh, but it's not so so personal to you that they go, mm, I don't like these tiles. I don't like these tiles. I, I currently have this dilemma over here about this one tile, which is like so, which is beautiful. I really love it. But I think, you know, I would love to put it in some interior, but I think it will put many people off. Um, and when you're doing uh, 30 bathrooms in one go, that's a very costly and big mistake to make. Um, so, but, but the beauty of it is you guys are designing smaller projects. You have an amazing, uh, is, I mean, I don't know, actually, um, I'm talking about the HMO um, crowd here uh, that is designing a, sm a small project at the time, I mean, in, you know, six or seven um, bed bathrooms. And I think uh, you can go crazy there because even if you do one bathroom like that, one bathroom like that, which we did in another project from Mountbatten Homes, we had seven, um, seven small apartments for rent. 
and then uh, every bathroom was different so that he uh, the developer can see what he likes the most and then take that onto his um, development projects which was great fun and uh, I would uh, urge you to do it I, I'm, I'm just probably not in the right space to do it for our clients um, so concept and specification you know, good design doesn't always require that much extra money. It just requires time. Uh, so I guess our clients pay us for that time that we spend looking for some cool things for their projects. Um, and it's the same with the website, actually. Uh, uh, you know, on my on the course that I've done, uh, I was um, advocating the same. You, you know, like when someone builds your website or does your marketing, they just spend so much time on it, and that's what you pay for. You could always do it yourself, but do you have that time? Um, let the product represent your brand. Um, so because we work on um, projects that are kind of re repeat. Uh, business with clients we have the luxury of like creating a brand look for them um, so for example one of our clients is like modern Victorian homes another is very modern homes and it, it allows us to to kind of continue that um, look and feel on their next development uh, appeal to your audience, give them what they want um, in this area, make sure the interiors look, um, the, the layouts are, are the same, but, but specification is very important. However great your show home is going to be, it will, it, it will cover up some of the crappy specification, we've seen that in the past, but, um, but the empty flats will not look very good. And source, 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 it's like with this example of uh, kitchens, you know, always get three quotes because you can find that someone isn't going to give you an amazing product for a much lower price. Um, technical details is something that um, we prepare. I don't love it, to be honest, but um, it allows us to see if the specification that we, um, that we created, if it fits within uh, the bathrooms um, that we that we did or the kitchens. Uh, very often developers will have comments on, yeah, I don't want that, I want that. I don't want, um, I don't know, a kitchen that way. I want a kitchen that way. We keep on redoing them quite a bit. But at the end, you know, we are 100% sure <clears throat> that the project that we, um, that we did, that the contractor can take that on and there is no questions. And I guess my biggest takeaway from doing uh, these uh, like technical details, uh, specification and, and drawings is that um, first of all, you get the product that you want um, because the contractor, you know, many clients that come to us before we start working with them, they have an agreement with the contractor, you know, everything is fine, but they don't actually know what they, what finishes they're getting. Uh, and obviously the contractor is going to put in the stuff that he can make the best uh, margins on, right? Uh, but at the end of the project, the contractor is out and the whole uh, burden of sales and rentals is on you. Um, so we prepare the, the tender pack basically with all of the specification and um, all of the technical details so that first of all, you know, everybody knows what they signed up to and the contractor that's attached to, to the contract. And um, also the second thing is, um, you know, you are not exposed uh, in, this, uh, in this whole process. You can control quality, you can control your brand impact and you know what you're talking about when you do the cost, because uh, the, these items, especially the larger, are uh, already priced up. Um, so if someone says, oh, I cannot deliver this kitchen, why can you not deliver this kitchen? It's too expensive. Well, you go, well, the quote that we had here is this much. What do you mean it's too expensive? How much did you, did you, um, did you plan for it? And those are discussions that are quite happening quite often. If this, uh, if this document, um, uh, all the technicals are created uh, too late in the process, um, and also I think many of you will relate to that. I certainly had that experience when I was doing my own projects. When there was no technical drawing, you would constantly get the calls from contractors. How do you want this toilet? How do you want that? How do you want this? Where do I put the dishwasher or whatever? Like, you know, the, the, all of the questions that take your time, take your mental space, 
they get you out of your focus and they actually, if you added that up, it, they take a lot of money because you are not doing stuff that is building your business. You're working in the business on the smallest stuff. Um, so what I would do is I would, uh, you know, prepare something like that. If you can spend a month or two just working through every detail of your development, it will be painful to start with the first one. But if you do them, you know, you do a small buy to lets or if you do HMOs, if you have that sort of pack and you can, um, you know, just crack on with doing it once and then just repeat it, change small different diff- different bits that would be huge for you and the last bit let me see how i'm doing on time okay i'm gonna run through this very quickly so that we have uh, maybe a few minutes for questions um the last thing is show homes and um i have seen us putting show homes into places that are really like low specification and they elevate uh, the place. So basically people come in and they touch the sofa and they touch the wooden table and they're like, oh my God, I can see totally see myself in here. But uh, they don't realize that what they're like, all of the items, they will not be there when they purchase the place. We're just like creating this really expensive looking place for them. Um, so why bother? Uh, I've prepared a very quick like uh, video on to show you. So um, it, this is typically like you get to the end of your project and you go, oh my God, like uh, when you're doing a small development projects anyway, uh, I need to do a show home because someone told me that I have to because I, um, you know, I need to show people that a sofa will fit here and the bed will fit here. So you run to Ikea and you buy like loads of stuff from Ikea. This is all of their, you know, like a highlights of Ikea. Um, and uh, actually next door, uh, a company like mine might be working there and create something like this. And when you, when you just consider, this is just a PowerPoint, but when you consider the feeling of coming into this space and just seeing all of those finishes versus coming into this space, which in principle has the same sofa, right? But it's co- just completely different feeling. Um, uh, so what we are trying to create is, is really something like that, you know, all of the little finishes, expensive, uh, for, uh, expensive, um, I guess, accessories and soft furnishings. Um, uh, they all create that vibe and a lot of things as well. When we uh, create a show home, there is a couple of vans of stuff that arrive for one bedroom apartment and no one can ever believe, but it's just having a lot of these little accessories that make it uh, look cool. And actually our secret, which I'm going to give to everyone over here, is that it's not about the big pieces of furniture. So um, don't go out there and buy a big expensive sofa and have nothing else there. Really what it's all about is about all the little bits. And and I want to show you just on a quick example on how that works. So here we have the same IKEA sofa as on the previous example. Then we have another Ikea sofa. You still get the same like feeling about it. You know, the sofa really doesn't matter. Like whatever design I have, it's all the accessories. And that's an ugly sofa, I really hate it. But, you know, you get the feeling that with all the accessories, you get exactly the same like um, vibe as you come through this space. So don't get so obsessed with those uh, large items. It's all the small ones that are going to make that show home work for you. And yeah, make sure that you have all the different bits in it. You know, the mirrors, accessories, linen, soft furnishings, furniture, uh, when you're creating uh, that vibrant, beautiful interior for yourself. Um, takeaways, always try to create a home um, expensive furniture will 100%, sorry, not expensive furniture, soft furnishings and accessories, 100% will increase the value, uh, perceived value of the home. You know, they, people will stop noticing the little bits that would annoy them on an empty apartment. They will, they will just look at cushions, they will look at flowers. It's unbelievable. I've seen it so many times and we do, when the show home launches, we are there typically just to see how it's going and hear the feedback. And it's just very strange that no one looks at the outside. They just look at the bits they like. It's always a natural shape, shape, a shell with uh, just some splashes of color on the 
on the uh, accessories. Um, and that is what brings, you know, I mentioned at the beginning, those professional pictures that the color just comes through so strong. Um, that's really important for us. Uh, and just have the balance. Don't go overboard board with what you like. Just make sure that you are creating something that everyone will like. Right. Whew. We've covered a whole lot. And we in an hour. Was, I'm so happy. That was amazing. Um, we've got a few questions for you. Um, the first one we've got is actually from YouTube. Yeah. Woohoo! Woo! So it's from <laughs> Tina Collins on YouTube. She yeah, said, um, oh, what does she say? She said, storage is her biggest issue for her dressing kit. Um, she uses fold foldable furniture where she can. Um, what what do you recommend for about small furniture or best pieces of folding furniture? Folding furniture for like small apartments? Yeah. I mean, we never had to do it, thankfully, because we uh, are working on um, new builds. So I wouldn't recommend it to a client um, to do small to do small furniture. Um, we are trying to. I mean, we always when we are styling a show home. Uh, or when we're looking at interiors, we're always looking at quite kind of your smallest possible bed. Uh, so, for example, a, a tip in a uh, style in a show home is when we are doing a bedroom, we're bringing a bed that's 190 by 135 or 140 by 190. This is for the um, beginner homes, right? Um, so um, we did, we never had to do it. Is there a follow up question, Ruth? No, there wasn't. Not on, not from Tina. But I'm just wondering about: Do you put smaller size doubles when you're selling a show home or like a London flat? Would you put a small yeah. double in rather than a, a standard size double? Are there any we kind put, of tips you've got in that direction? Yeah. So I want to find a bed that's 190 long not two meters, but that's 10 centimeters. I know that it sounds ridiculous, but it actually makes a big visual difference. And we're going to add a very large um, uh, very large duvet on it anyway. So it will seem like it's larger and yeah. because it will be flowing off the bed. But um, yeah, they are typically 140 centimeters on 190. So yeah. are probably a bit smaller than everybody else is putting. So that's, that's one tip. I personally, if there is a small... And that goes back to the folding furniture uh, question. If there is a small bedroom, I like to do exposed wardrobes. Um, so just something like, you know, like a rail or like a very cool industrial rail from the bottom to the top, for example. Uh, and uh, that also goes back to what I mentioned about the layouts, because if you don't think of the layouts early enough, then you don't actually have a space for, for wardrobe. So when we like come into the show home and there is like 30 centimeters between the wall and the window, for example, and we go like, oh my God, if we put the wardrobe here, it's going to cover the window. It's such bad design. So in that case, we would put like a really fancy rail you know, that's built in from the top to the bottom and, uh, yeah, and it, and it looks really nice. Industrial looking. Fantastic. We've got another question from Natalie Gascoigne. It says, uh, this is going back to your hoarding. You were talking about hoardings earlier. If you don't have any land around a development, could the hoarding look just a bit rubbish if, if it's just hanging down or attached to the building in some way? Um, she would really like to do this for her next one, but she said there's limited external space. Yeah, and we have we see this quite often, um, and we had the client who put uh, put up a hoarding as you drive into the site entrance, and he just put up like a banner next to it. And we're still, I think this was about a month ago. We still have quite had quite a few inquiries from that, which I was surprised because I always like it to be really large. But I think just whatever the logic behind it is that people walk around, right? And those are your premium customers, someone that already lives in the area that, you know, knows how amazing that plot of land is. And it's uh, what's the easiest way to like get hold of them is have some sort of sign somewhere. And that sign was like probably like a meter by a meter, something like that, not much larger. And and all examples we've had is that even that you just once once there is a couple walking the dog and they go like oh my god your mom could live here 
You know, that's the sort of people that we want to capture and and have them browse the website, go through all the floor plans, what would work for us, and then eventually just um, drop you a message for contact. Great, we've got another question here. Is there a um, is there kind of a certain percentage of the cost that should be spent on interiors, branding, etc.? Is there kind of a rule of thumb for that? I don't think there is a rule, but <laughs> interestingly, I think I was working it out recently on like all the added value. It's very different from project to project, you know, like we've done, for example, Claire's property in Plymouth, we did marketing for them. Um, and that's uh, flats that are selling for <clears throat> between 100 and 130,000 uh, pounds. But it's still, it what it what it did is it it uh, created that big hype around the project because we had professional CGIs, we had really nice marketing brochure that the agent you know typically doesn't put together to that standard, and that brought in a lot of buyers. And I think uh, they are now half half of the scheme was sold within a, a couple of weeks. Claire maybe can mention it later. Um, so it's like an extreme case where the properties are quite cheap, but you would still go with marketing package for it because it's 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 what brings buyers to to um, to to come in and view it. And the way I explain it to my clients is we look at their financing costs typically. So if your financing costs are you know on a scheme twenty grand a month, for example, and you you just you will in a normal strategy when you just wait until you finish the development and then you have like six months until the whole lot sells that's this much what would happen what could you save if you were to sell everything on practical completion and in my view that's kind of where you should be thinking of well okay I could potentially save this much so I'm gonna just spend this money a year in advance um that's one thing I, I mean i don't i don't actually have a better answer to this i don't think that's great um another question from emma stubbings if you do a high number of units would you use the same kitchen in each or two kitchen varieties or you know how do, how do you plan that we have uh it, i think it depends on the developer so most of the time we either have the same or we have two or three colors of the same uh, style because I think the maximum you know, on the Brompton Gardens we just um, I just showed you there were four different um, uh, houses and they were all different colors the same style but because you don't want people to feel oh they have a better one it's just color uh, but actually interestingly because um, the, the way they were sold before practical completion, we prepared four different colors, but then the buyers came in and chose it themselves, uh, which was one of the bonuses of like not waiting until it's finished and then selling, but like them coming earlier, putting reservation and then being able to choose a color of their kitchen. Um, so that's how we typically do it. Not overcomplicated is the name of the game. Where do you store everything once the show home is finished? Yeah, good question. And I am constantly, I'm going, we've, we've stopped doing so many show homes. Uh, initially, we've had quite a few. That's how the business started. But as we went with actually do the marketing well and then don't have to have a show home strategy. And then we had got rid of storage. But uh, this, the story of my life was storage, no storage, storage, no storage, storage, no storage, storage, no storage. I hate having storage. But um, uh, and uh, but yeah, the challenge is when a show home arrives, then you get like 70 million um, packages arriving at the same time and they have to come somewhere. Um, so at the moment, we just have a very large office with a uh, ground floor external entrance that allows that. Another question from Louise Reynolds. Uh, do, you, do you only do big developer projects now versus small one to two unit developments? Oh, what, kind yeah. of, what kind of level projects are you doing now? I think we just, we prefer to specialize on this, like nine unit development is our typical one. And then uh, the more, the better really, because it, um, the cost is kind of, at some point it gets to a level where it's almost a fixed cost. 
you know, we won't charge any more than than that. So if you have 25, that just gets uh, distributed over 25. But if you have three and you still have to pay what we believe is the is almost like a cost that uh, every scheme has to pay for, then it might not be an option for you unless these um, these developments are um, selling for a million or two million or twenty million or whatever. Then you obviously are going to spend more on marketing. An interesting thing about marketing as well, we were discussing this on another project uh, recently is like uh, we were discussing it on uh, two homes of four million, where you know the, all of your sales costs were. The, the agent wanted a fee of 1.5 percent of 1.7 per 1.75 percent or whatever which adds up to like 100 whatever 20 plus grand and we were just wondering is it more is it not better to just spend that and do all of your sales yourself if you have time you know because that's a huge budget to even do social media to uh, really spam everyone within one mile from your area for a year <laughs> you would you would 100 percent spend less money than 120k uh, on marketing um and everybody is still like really fixated on estate agents have the lists but i mean that that's if that's the only added value of uh and you're paying 120 grand for it then you know maybe it's not worth it um so yeah, I think guess it depends on your strategy, um, but I think there is uh, there is a better way in the future to sell socially rather than through you know waiting and then uh, relying on an, on an, a third party, you know, a, a state agent who also has other interests, not only your project. I've got another question here. Um, do you often give? Uh clients the older oh, that the end person moving in a choice on the products so different tiles or different kitchen etc we never do that we never do that because it uh, creates such a mess in a development and really no one has the time unless you have so if you go to linden homes or whatever some of the big developers you can choose your finishes uh, but first of all, I have been personally a witness of uh, on a scheme where we were um, doing the whole um, home, uh, styling it after it was finished, where, you know, the, the bed, they chose something, that the couple that lived there chose something, and then a different bathroom suddenly appeared. So it's dangerous because even on a large project, you know, and with a large developer, there is so many people you have to send this document to that it might go wrong. So, uh, and maybe a large developer can afford this sort of thing, but if you are on a smaller scheme and you wanna, you know, finance cost is important, uh, proceeding quickly. I don't want any surprises anywhere in the chain. So it's you're taking what we have, it's on the CGIs, and then it makes your way to your bathroom and then that's it. Shelley's got a question here. She's got a development in planning in the planning phase at the moment and one in buying. How soon should she plan the interiors? Um we do it always for the tender, so we do it quite early. Uh, you know, the tip uh, there might be some items that are then not available a year later or whenever you actually come to buy in it. But it's it's going to be like a tile that's no longer there and you can always replace it to something similar. So I would do it for the tender process because um, you want uh, to give the contractor a very clear idea of what uh, he's building and not have any... You know, the, the worst thing really on a project that can happen, and I've seen it so many times, is contractor walking out. And your job is to keep him happy. And the less um, the less problems you can, you know, manage in advance, the more you can agree without there being any clash or problems later on, uh, the no. better. Because once they walk out of the scheme... Uh, your electrician will be a problem, you know, getting all of the warranties. It's a, it's a huge deal. So yeah. just make sure that you don't have That's any serious, issues I? later on. Just prepare everything. Everybody knows exactly what they have to do. I think we've got time for any last questions, if anyone wants to ask anything. What? Carolina. Your strategy is by far the best. I mean, it's just not even a comparison. 
Um, the difficulty that I've That's had right is that uh, development finance release marketing money towards the end, perhaps because they're so slow to change. Um, mm. What would you suggest? Has anyone else surmounted that problem or even encountered it? They, if they have, they haven't told us. Uh -huh. So um, I think, but maybe it's because we, where we, how we package it is we do interiors plus marketing. So it's not, um, they, they purchase the whole lot and then we just uh, spread it across a couple of months. So maybe that, that um, doesn't quite, it does, it's, isn't looking like marketing only. Um, it's just a full package and it's not like because we don't start with today we're doing marketing tomorrow we're doing interiors yeah. it's all kind of interlinked when we design we design straight with CGI I know so. completely I meaning that just without a doubt your offering is great I'm wondering actually even if I speak to development finance if they would maybe um, actually change because this is the time of change uh, and uh, you know it's just that you know, most people off plan sales are like a, almost like a unicorn, you know. Uh, but this is a very real strategy for, for getting them, which has to be good for everyone in this current climate. So, yeah, I'll, and we, I'll speak to them. We, yeah, we don't actually like, um, I think the way our clients work and what we mostly tell them is like it's not actually an off plan sale because that's they that has a lot of negativity around it mm -hmm. and risk. And no one really wants to take that risk. So it's more like what we are after is reservations that are confirmed, yeah. pay for, you know. And then once you see the project, you are ready to move on. Or within the last two months, you start, or three months, you start moving with the legal process because you mm -hmm. see that it's almost there. And that's when maybe you will give them a bonus of choosing a kitchen color or whatever, you know, like um, uh, because but but really the biggest value for these people is they get immediately the houses that they want with the small reservation. And it gives you such a peace of mind because it's so stressful to be carrying all those loans, to be talking to investors. You know, I've done that and I know. And if you know that you know 10 units out of 12 are already reserved someone is there waiting for their home it's just a different energy level for a developer i think absolutely and actually you've you've explained it in a way that i can i can approach development finance um just yeah. with your insights so thank you very much it's been marvelous no worries. thanks maria oh a massive thanks to carolina i think we're out of time now um but i just wanted to say thank you so much for behalf of everyone I found that really informative and uh, certainly given me lots to think about so amazing um, thank you lady and, and thanks guys we've been on YouTube today so if you haven't subscribed please do subscribe and um Carol, oh, there's I actually extra. have a bonus yeah. I have a bonus so uh so whoever subscribes today and or is already subscribed I've recorded a small video on how you can transform a crappy room quickly on a computer just you know playing with all the with all the finishes so it's going to go on today and whoever is subscribed will get a notification fantastic thanks a lot guys have a lovely thank saturday you. have a lovely saturday thank you. Bye. Thank you very much.